Yankees really acquired Chapman for basically a bunch of tennis balls? No, I wasn't dreaming. That's exactly what happened. Man, did the Dodgers screw this one up. Uh, they basically had Chapman in their laps. And because of this alleged domestic violence accusation against him, they reneged on a deal and they decided to go in another direction. Ironically, that other direction involves harassing the Yankees about Andrew Miller. Pretty much just like the Astros and every other team who needs a closer nowadays. But back to Mr. Chapman, who is the main story here. The Yankees practically just, just fleece the Reds, and there's no other way to, to go about that. They didn't give up any of their renowned prospects. No Jorge Mateo, no Aaron Judge, no Greg Bird, no Luis Severino, not even James Caprellian, who might be ready by the second half of next year or the year after. And it really goes to show you that the Reds should have dealt him at least a year before. They basically followed the idiotic blueprint of the Phillies, where they ended up trading a player that was either going to be out of their control, not going to compare it to aging, but they were just going to stick to just not being under their control way after they should have. And they would have definitely got a lot for him because, you know, they would have got rid of him before this domestic uh, violence allegation was raised against them. And if I was the GM of the Reds, I would have held firm on my asking price. He probably would have got close to what he was originally asking for. You know, from what I read, he was asking for top prospects. He was basically talking to the Yankees last year around the All-Star break, and he insisted on Judge, Bird, or Severino at least to start the conversation. And Cashin promptly probably laughed and hung up the phone. But, you know, I don't get why he, he just dropped his asking price. From what I read on the report, the girl, or his girlfriend, basically just told the police officers that he choked her. And then he proceeded to fire his gun several times in his, into his garage door. Then, I'm not sure, it might have been his counter's garage door. I'm pretty sure it's his garage door. But, when they looked at her and her neck, they found no bruises, nothing regarding what she uh, claimed happened. And... There really is no substantial proof at all, really, aside from the bullets fired from the gun. And was this really something to just say, oh, he's he's bad news, you know, he's a free agent anyway, let's just get rid of him. They were better off just keeping him. Instead, they just chose to, to ship him off as soon as they got the chance. And to me, it says a couple of things. That, that GM, who used to be the GM of the Cardinals... He's losing it, or he never had it, because they weren't afraid to get rid of him and promote um, John Mozeliak. And it was probably him and the guys around Walt Jockety were doing the work for him when he was the general manager of the Cardinals all those years ago, before he took on the job as a Reds GM. He got nothing for Todd Frazier. He got nothing for Chapman, basically. I'm not going to say nothing. He got a couple of uh, decent prospects, nothing overall scouts, and who knows, you know? Good players emerge from... Any type of class, really, when you think about it. That's not to say these guys aren't going to have long careers, but the top two prospects in this deal were Eric Jagalo and Rookie Davis. The other guys are fringe prospects or people to round out a minor league roster, essentially. And as a Yankee fan, you have to be ecstatic about this. You picked them up for nothing, and if he does end up getting suspended, I think if he serves on the suspension list more than 47 days, the Yankees are actually allowed to keep him because he would have served too many days on a suspension list to be eligible for a free agency. And if he doesn't get suspended or it's lower than that, then he gets to pitch the whole year, and the Yankees with all the money coming off the books this year and the next year, they're probably going to have no problem signing him back if they choose to do so. And this topic has been raised, I've seen, and I understandably so, with the domestic violence issue and, oh, why are the Yankees picking up this guy? Look, guys, this isn't... Puppies and unicorns in Disneyland. These are men living their lives in the real world. They're not just going to be smiling and sitting on a couch and reading the Bible. Things happen. And things happen all the time whether we know it or not. And it's just, in this instance, it happened to be made public and Chapman pretty much brought it on to himself. By basically firing the gunshots and doing whatever he did.
th th this is just life. And if you want to go on and, and say the Yankees are, are slimy and they're taking on this guy because they don't care about the goodness of people that they want to win, then you're right. That's what winners do. If you see high-end talent or somebody with high-end ability and their baggage isn't really that much to deal with, you know, I'm not trying to downplay domestic violence, but this isn't an issue where you saw the girl just absolutely wrecked. This isn't Ray Rice, where he just knocked her out cold, and then dragged her body like a piece of garbage. You know, they didn't find any marks on her on her neck. Look, the guy obviously has, has a temper. He's had issues before with the Cubs, um, doing somersaults. I forgot again, too, but he did two somersaults, and Dusty Baker told him to basically cut it the fuck off. So, he isn't by any means a representative of the Pope, or an introductory character in a children's book, but the guy throws 102 on average. He's topped out 105. Look at his numbers his whole career. They've been phenomenal. Basically been an all-star since he's been in the big leagues. He finished 8th in the sign award voting one year, if I'm not mistaken. That's incredible as a closer. But as Cashman said, and every other analyst basically Agreeing with Cashman, the offer was too good to turn down. There was really nothing to lose. This, If he gets suspended, it's not going to be for a year or anything. <laughs> it's really not. He might not even get suspended at all. Might. But obviously, he probably will. If it's 47 games, then so be it. They get him for another year. They basically just miss a month, and they can replace that 7-6 inning gap with guys that I think have high potential and Lindgren if he's healthy coming off that um, that elbow issue last year or Rumbelow I'm a big fan of the Yankees bullpen is stacked even without Chapman they got a lot of high young end arms down there with high octane heat and talent and if he's a part of the team to begin the season it makes them that much better because looking at it the only weakness in the bullpen is probably going to be the long man whoever that may be whoever doesn't win the fifth starter job or whoever they decide to bring out of spring training just to fill out that last 25th uh, spot. They might not even carry a long man um, the first month of April because of the off days. But this is an absolute steal for the Yankees. And if everything goes right, they should at least be able to contend for a playoff spot. And hopefully they get past the first round, the first wild card, whatever they end up doing, and they just ride this bullpen and bring hell on earth to everybody they face. And it's got to be exciting as heck for a Yankee fan because you know what's coming after this year. These last couple of years, they've been in the middle just winning 80-whatever games, and that's with injuries. You know, the team was still good in a 290 games, in my opinion. But with things not going their way, they still managed to eke out 80 or so wins and maintain respectability. And with all the money coming off the books, and then you have Jose Fernandez and Bryce Harper, I think they're free agents in 2018. Pretty sure Harper's going to be a Yankee. <laughs> so dream is to be a Yankee, and they're going to have all this money to throw at them. Fernandez, I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure they're going to go at them both pretty equally, and they're going to throw a big briefcase or multiple briefcases of cash at them. And by then, they'll have all their young guys up. High end potential guys who I've seen and I'm impressed as heck. I mean, we saw Greg Bird, you're going to see Aaron Judge. And from what I've read, Gary Sanchez has changed his attitude, although I've never been a big fan of him. Catchers aren't really at a premium nowadays anyway, so if he gives you anything to what he gives you in the minors, that's still a bonus. That's a plus, and it allows you to possibly trade McCann. What I love about this team is that they have depth at every position. They got Bird backing up the chair, they got Sanchez backing up McCann, and they got Judge backing up Beltran. Should something happen um, during the season or the beginning, you know, things happen. People get hurt. Wally Pip, hello there. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. As a Yankee fan, once again, I'm personally excited about this. How, how can you not be? You're going to have these three monsters unless one of them gets hurt. Or even if one of them gets hurt, the bullpen should still be fine. They, they strike out a ridiculous amount of guys per nine innings. You know, I'm going to put up Chapman's stats. And if you don't know him already, welcome to baseball. This has a chance to be the best bullpen in baseball history. 
knock on wood, hopefully they stay healthy, and the rest of the team looks ready to rock and roll. You got Tanaka, you got Evaldi, you got Pineda, you got Severino, you got Nova on the Frages here, you got that alcoholic doing whatever he does, but it worse comes to worse, he's the first starter. And they can either bring up somebody or make a trade for somebody because they still have resources in the minors. So this season looks like it's going to be a pretty good one. The year after this, I'm pretty sure they're going to go back to winning 95 games. You know, they're going to do their thing. And they can easily win this division. Behind Price, I'm not really confident in the Red Sox rotation. Like, I feel like the Yankees have a bunch of number twos, and they have a number one, and then they have a three, and then fours. So you can think about that and try to mix and match them all you want, but I still think the Yankees have a higher end potential rotation, especially with with Severino and Evaldi, and at least Evaldi has two more years before they pay him $20 million, so they have that. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comment section once again, and uh, I will see you next time. Be safe, guys. Ball game over. Yankees win. Duh! Yankees!